Yeah, I would lose my mind. Like I'm normally, you know me from work. I'm normally like a quiet guy. I would lose my mind. Would you? <laughs> would, would you have like a like a pre-planned dance or what would you do when they called your name? You got to stand up. You got to yeah. do something crazy, and then you got to run down. Yeah. Like, do you have a, an orchestrated yeah, I, thing that you're gonna do? No, because I never even thought of it. Like <laughs> I. What you I never do? thought of it. It's on your goal list. You got to be like, you got to no, do this kind of gang sign. Yeah. You got to wear, it's, it's, what kind of shirt are you going to wear? <laughs> this is a whole thing. No gang sign. A shirt probably promoting me. Um, a go. dance. Like maybe I would just shimmy my way down a little bit. Yeah, Something little, simple. Yeah, a little show shimmy. Little, I'm, show I'm, not, shimmy. I'm not too. I'm and not then the next like, thing is, are you going to high five everyone else? All the other contestants on the bottom. Oh, yeah. Are you just going to go yeah. to your spot and be like, all right, I'm kicking ass. Fuck all y'all. Or are you going to high five everybody? So, so half of me wants to do both. Like, I want to be like the quiet storm that just walks up, kills everything. They're like, damn. But you're on TV. You got to You got to be something. nice. Yeah, Plus, so you can have gonna like your Twitch on. name on your shirt, too, yeah. for promotion. Yeah. So, yeah, you got to be nice. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to high five. Every, I might make a laugh. I'll high five everyone up and down the aisles. But they'll probably tell me to sit my ass down if I tried that. <laughs> there you go. Are you good at the prices, right? Like, when you're watching, are you good with getting the prices and... In the games. I'm good with numbers. So I feel like with some hard studying, I first I have to figure out if they're doing like East Coast, West Coast prices. Like I've thought this through. So figure wow. out what kind of prices they're doing. Then watch a few episodes just to see what kind of products they do. Like, and by a few, I mean like a lot. And because there, there's no knowing what games you're going to get. And then get familiar mm-hmm. with the games. Like I know they have like the mini golf putt putt game. They have like just random guest games. They have the higher or lower game. Like get familiar with those games. And then the hardest part is the show. Like the wheel is all luck. Like spinning the wheel. Yeah. I don't care how many people you watch. It's it's luck. Um, but the showcase, that's going to be hard. Showcase they showdown. Yeah, you know, they give you like, they're like, all right, here's uh, an RV, a vacation, um, like <laughs> a, a pair of sunglasses. Sandwich. Yeah. How much, is, how much is all of it? And you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so so that that i don't even know how you prepare for that one um but yeah figure out what, how they're basing their prices and then just going and just studying like supermarkets because if you ask me prices right now of like computer parts video game parts accessories i know for the most part i could give you within like ten dollars twenty dollars yeah so if i just expand that to like food and stuff i feel like i'd be okay yeah, hopefully there's a good amount of time between when you get selected to play and then when you actually go on. So you have some time to train and practice. Maybe there's like a Price is Right training camp you could go to in the meantime where they Yo, train I you on the games and, and the prices of things. Even, That's I a good idea. think of that. That's, if, it, if it doesn't exist, that should exist. <laughs> that should be, right? Like, okay, like it's a guy online who's like, hey, I, I heard you just got on the Price is Right. Come to my training camp. It's a two-week program. We'll get you ready to go, guaranteed to get you like top three or something like that, yeah. you know? So funny game show story. Um, one of my friends, his exes made it onto um, Wheel of Fortune, I think it was. And this was after they broke up. So instead of like wishing good for her, he was watching, drinking, just hoping she would bomb. And she ended what? up bombing. But <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was terrible. Like I mean, I'm not a vindictive person, but it was his ex or whatever. But yeah, she ended up getting just to know someone who got on the wheel of fortune. <gasps> yep, speaking of someone who Ooh. didn't bomb, one of my professors, uh Wilbur, I love you, dude. He got on Jeopardy. What? And the man killed it. He was my professor, my English professor got on Jeopardy. He was killing it. And then he gets to the final Jeopardy. And they ask what the one of the highest selling albums of like either all time or resurgence was, yeah. and the answer was the Beatles, Sgt. Pepper's, Lonely Hearts, um, the Lonely Heart. It's a long name band. Uh, the Lonely Hearts Club album. He knew the answer, but he only got out Sgt. Pepper's and the Lonely or Sgt. Pepper's and. And they go through the first guy uh, gets it right, but only bet like a hundred dollars. Second person gets it right, only bet like zero dollars. He he bet everything, doubled up. And he knew it. They yeah, they said, "Aunt, we can't accept Sergeant Pepper's and the Lonely or whatever." And he lost on that. He lost all of his money and lost the whole game. It, he lost the whole game because he didn't f- finish writing out Sergeant Pepper and the Lonely. He just didn't have the time. He I'm didn't assuming? Have the time. Yeah. 
I would not I come was, back to school if that was like, I was, <laughs> like, I, no. was heart, I was heartbroken. Dang, today, that's so sad. Did you watch it? I didn't watch it live. I went back and um, I watched it though. Dang. I felt that's so gotta be surreal watching someone you know on the show like that. Oh yeah. And especially and he deserved it. That man, he so he was one of the there's always these things online about like, yo, how old were you when you had your first black teacher or something like that? I don't know if you've mm-hmm. ever seen that. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was one of two um black English professors that I had. Oh, or wow. that I've ever seen, to be honest, like black male English professors. And he made that class amazing. It was called Rhetorics of the Hero. And we watched like movies. We did all this stuff where we just like wrote things about like what it meant to be a hero, good versus evil. Uh, My final thesis was on like a cartoon show and a movie or something like that. And it was just, it was awesome. It made English class. Yeah. It made English class awesome. Yeah. So it was, it was cool. Um, And I got really sidetracked. My bad, dude. No, no you're good. <laughs> the the final point, the and the final one beat Xavier Woods um, in the three out of five. So there's a wrestler. I'm a big pro wrestling fan. His name is Xavier Woods in wrestling, or Austin Creed when he plays video games. He's he actually just got the spot as the host of G4. Um, I don't know if you know G4, but it's like a video game. Um, like G4 TV. Like, yeah, G4 TV. He's going to be mm-hmm. the new horse, host of G4 TV. So I've been watching him play re- or watching him wrestle for the last like seven years or so. And the dude grew up exactly like me. Like he's maybe five years older, but loved cartoons, loved video games. Everything I love, we love the same stuff. Um, and he ended up getting on Twitch through wrestling. He ended up making his own YouTube. He's just made like his small little empire. Um, I'm actually wearing right now. You can't just see, but his, this shirt. He's this. Oh dude shit! Right here on the trombone. This is oh his, really? His wrestling is that shirt. The, yeah. Oh, he's a wrestler, like a yeah. WWE he's a, wrestler. Yes, he's a. This is oh, his. Yeah, wow. This is a new day shirt. So he's the new day. The dude. Yep. So he's the dude with the trombone. So one day I was like, you know what? The epitome of me knowing I made it and everything I want to do is for him to recognize me. So that's why my final one, the one that kind of means the last me, one. Yeah. yeah, is if I make Twitch partner, I have something to bring to the table. I'm mm-hmm. gonna try to challenge him, and I think I could beat him in three out of five, three and five random video games. Like his thing on Twitch is that like he has a tournament where he has other wrestlers play random games to prove that they're like the best overall gamer. So I'm mm-hmm. I would have five random games, and I think I could beat him best three out of five. And the funny thing is later on in that tweet, the pin tweet that you got that from, he actually responded. And what? Wrote, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you go back to the tweet, he responded with the Beyonce picture saying, like, follow your dreams or something like that. Dang, so, that's kind of so cool. He, yeah, so he noticed the tweet. So I go. don't know how I'm going to keep getting his attention because he definitely forgot by now. He's, 2030, he's you're going to find him after you're like Twitch famous and everything. Like, oh, yo, let's do this. 2030, no, man. Should, sooner than that. Like, 2022. <laughs> Let's go. 2022. I'm 2022. here for it. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep getting this attention, but that's the that's the final check mark. That's badass. That's actually wild because when you brought up their black teacher thing, I was thinking about it, and I don't think I've ever had a black teacher. What in ever? my entire life? Yeah, I'm thinking of elementary school. Definitely not, because like you, yeah, I grew up in a town where I think like my family was like one of two or three black families in the whole town. Yeah. So definitely not in middle school. In high school, there was maybe one black teacher, but I didn't have him for any classes. Yeah. And then college, I think the first black teacher I had was my CI, like in PT school. Like my first. Seriously, that long? I think so. I think so. So, like in in elementary school, I think there weren't any for me. In middle school, there was probably one or two that I'd seen around, but I never had. And then in high school. I think my English professor was the first like full time, not substitute, not like a just there for one year tryout, like yeah. tenured black teacher. Yeah. Um, and I mean, like you said, that's how it is in those. I don't how like how was it for you growing up where you were as like one of two black families? Because I was the same. Um, it wasn't great. I mean, and because I mean, you were in New York. I'm in Florida, so it's like the South. I mm-hmm. guess so. There was. I mean, I personally didn't have a lot of any like racist issues per se, or not anything crazy. Maybe like a, co- a comment here or there. Yeah. But um, 
I do know some people who had like a lot of issues. Like I know, mm-hmm. um, I didn't want to say some of the stuff on the podcast. It's pretty crazy, but mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, just just some uh, some like racist stuff that you I guess assume would happen in a town full of, you know, yeah. like no black people, you know, and and, and you're in the south too. Yeah, it, and you might have actually had it harder because you're in the south, and it just sucks because I know for me, like this is, uh, like you we kind of being in it's one you're already a minority but being a small minority in an area like that like you have to learn to present yourself away like i don't know if you did it but i actively was much more nicer and vibrant growing up like they have to to be like you have to go out of your way to be nice because people already have the preconceived notion that oh you're like a black you're a black kid you're probably into some trouble or you're probably mean or something so it's like okay i need to be extra nice just to be a regular baseline of where where everyone else is exactly and it was like that because the black kids where i grew up actually were doing stupid shit for no reason like it was it was dumb but they were doing bad stuff and they were setting that example so i had to i didn't really hang out like i hung out with a few of them obviously because you don't not hang out with someone just because of something like that but if i saw people who were doing the wrong thing I was out like I wasn't trying to stay around for that because I knew what I wanted to do I knew where I was coming from like these kids are growing up and I was four years old when I heard of my first shootout like I don't want to be in that life so I knew where I was trying to end up so I just made sure I just stayed on that path yeah and that's that's awesome that's really good and being from from Englewood isn't like that it's not dangerous at all it's pretty safe Mm -hmm. There's not like shootings or anything like that. So there wasn't that side of it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, definitely. I know I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Just Sorry, wild. I didn't make I don't I didn't want this to get dark. <laughs> no, yeah. she, got, she got dark real quick. Real, real um, fast. <laughs> I had another question. Let me see. Let me go back to my to my question list. But um Yeah, yeah. Uh where were we at? Let's see. Um oh yeah, so one of your goals is to be married. And I asked Glenn this question a couple of days ago. How did you and your fiance meet? meet uh very first time we met was fourth grade so no, fifth, grade, fifth grade yeah, 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 yeah fifth grade so we went to elementary school together she moved up to warwick th- like three or four years after i did so we met in fifth grade because we had mutual friends and then we knew each other all through me- middle school we were like friends um we were acquaintances and friends and then in high school we had the same like small friend group so from like freshman, sophomore year on, we had the same like three best friends. And then senior year, there was a core, like four of us, like a core four, maybe five of us that just were always together. And she was one of them. And we were just always good friends. And then we started dating freshman year of college. Oh, shoot. So yeah. hold on, hold on, hold on. I got, I got some questions. So how did you, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> how did you go from friends to dating? Like, how did that Um, transition happen? So we always just came in. We were always in contact. And she went to school. She went to college an hour away from me. So when our friends would get back together, we would hang out and stuff like that. So we would just hang out. And then we we always felt something, I guess. So then uh, it just happened one night. So it was cool. It was like a natural kind of transition? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't awkward by any means, I don't think. And then how did it go from, like, how did you know she was the one you wanted to marry? I mean, it just, that's something that just grows. Like, that's something, I guess, some people are just like, oh, I knew the moment I woke up. And I I mean, (laughs) it's it's not. The moment I woke up. Yeah. I woke up one day and I just knew it. Yeah. Like, I saw her and I just knew, like, that's not how life always is. Like, over time, you you spend time with someone and you see what their ideas are and their ideals are and what they want out of life. And when those things line up, you realize, all right, this is someone that I can trust and spend my life with. And that's, I trust her with everything and I could trust her with a family. So that's how I knew Dang, like it's just, that's deep. just something that comes over time. Like it's not, it's not like a book or a movie or anything like that. It's just effort. <laughs> So. so, and I know you asked her at the beach to be yes. your fiance, get married, yes. whatever. So, How did that so, whole thing go down? So, um, so it was, 
June and I was figuring out how I wanted to do it. Um, 